need the clicker, yo. Safe. Wait, don't start my time yet. I'm not smoking. I was gonna, I was gonna play a song to hype myself up. You're playing the time, bro. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. It's such a track. I love it. Uh, anyway, TED Talk. Okay. I'm not gonna be at the post show thingy because I just don't like people. But I'm writing a book called. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. I'm writing a book called uh, How to Sell Drugs at a TEDx Event. <laughs> uh, herb knows. Herb knows. <laughs> uh, yeah. Never put your back to the audience. I've got. I've got a book. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, I work here at home. I actually, I'm an usher. That's just proof. I work here. Um, it's funny because I'm a poet as well, or like people call me a poet, and then that's what I am. But I mean, like, um, uh, what was it? What was I gonna say? Something clever. It's gone. It's fully gone. Oh yeah, that was it. So if this doesn't, if you see me here in like six months and I'm I'm ripping your tickets as an usher, it's your fault because like this didn't go viral. And <laughs> I, do you know what I mean? Uh, so don't say hi to me or any of that. So I'm a, I'm a poet by name, I'm a poet by, I don't really, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not really a poet. I don't really call myself a poet. I don't like poetry that much. I don't really listen to it or watch it. I go to see poetry shows and stuff. And yeah, so I'm gonna talk to you about poetry even though I didn't want to talk about poetry because I felt like I'd be self-limiting and it's like you expect me to talk about poetry and whatever. But yeah, but if I didn't do it about poetry, yeah. So I was gonna do it about Flat Earth Society and I was going to do it about the idea of black privilege, which is something I heard on the Brilliant Idiots podcast. And I was going to talk about what you know versus what you believe, because I believe that um, security guards in Sainsbury's hate me because they always follow me, right? But I don't know if it's because I look sketchy or if, 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 if I'm black, I don't want to play the race card. And then it's like, I got, I got called Streetwise in an article once. I did a performance in Liverpool and they called me Streetwise in the thing, and I'm like, but how am I streetwise? Because I don't exude that energy of streetwiseness. I don't speak about, apart from the drug dealing thing earlier, I don't speak about, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I did it to myself. I'm not allowed to swear on this because my mum might watch it, but I swear normally, and she didn't know that either, but. <laughs> this better, yo, okay. I'm from Old, I'm from Old Trafford. It, it did it, it did it already. Okay, so why? Why poetry? I've got a book with me because I'm a terrible person. I've got a lot to say and I don't know how to talk to people, really. I'm quite awkward. I'm what the kid... Yeah, so that's insecure. So people always ask me, you know, why poetry? Why poetry? Why is that the thing that you do? It's a weird thing for people like me in my area to do as well. It's not something that a lot of people from Old Trafford do. I don't know if I can say that. I feel comfortable saying that, so I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna claim it. Um, right, I had stuff. Uh, so I don't know why poetry is a thing. I don't know why, I keep checking. I don't know why poetry is a thing that I do. Maybe I should have been a rapper. I do rap, but I, maybe I should have been a rapper or, or, or something cooler. Because the thing is, I was never cool. I never grew, I didn't grow up cool. I wasn't cool, I got, I mean, I didn't get, bu I didn't get bullied. I got beaten up, but I didn't get bullied. <laughs> Stop laughing at me, it's not funny. And, all right, you just carry on laughing. But what I'm saying is, um, it wasn't cool. It's never been cool to do poetry. So I was like, why am I doing it? Because I thought if I wasn't cool, I'd try and do something cool to redeem my, myself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next one, let's just, let's just go. Let's just go. So origin story. I don't have an origin story as tragic or traumatic as Wolverine did. Oh yeah, if you want to hear a poem at any point, just put your hand up. <laughs> put your hand down. Put no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but um, sugar. Right. So yeah. So so so. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as Wolverine's. I started doing poetry in primary school. They just gave it me for homework, and then they they kind of just said, yeah, it's good. So carry on. And so I did, I brought it back to the teachers and they like gave me that positive reinforcement that I was lacking because whatever. And like, it, it, I, I did it for that. So my why, as an 11 year old, my why was so I can get the feedback, the feedback was positive. So that was my why. But I don't know what, what my why is now. I don't know why I'm still doing it. And so that's what I'm gonna discuss with you. Um, 
Um, am I doing it for myself? I wasn't doing it for myself. I wasn't doing it for the art. I was doing it for the teachers to tell me that it was good. And I don't think that was an honest thing to do. I think that was kind of uh, betraying the art itself. Sick. That's me. <laughs> I was looking all moody and stuff. I hadn't been outside in a long time. And then, <laughs> so that, yeah. I like how I look in that though. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next one? So Young Identity is a organization. It will be an organization. It's under a parent company right now, but Young Identity is where I learned to love poetry. It's where I fell in love with poetry. And they, uh, Shirley, me and Ali Gadima uh, co-founded it. And it, it, it's, it's, it's homegrown and it's really good. And they have workshops everywhere. And, it, and they just gave me a new lease for life in terms of hearing other poets and not being alone in being a weird poet from, pri you know, from a primary school. Because I got known for it in primary school and it's not a cool thing, it's just added more stress. So, stop laughing, man. It's, funny. it's a serious TED talk. Oh, gosh. Um, I remember having a debate with myself about just my duty as a poet, am I supposed to be writing about something? And that's what Young, that's what young Identity taught me to challenge is, is my duty to, I don't know, my, my duty as a writer rather than whatever. My duty as a writer. And that's why when I say Old Trafford, this is what people you know, think. I'm not really a supporter or anything. But this is what I mean. And you only get that if you're from Old Trafford. Is anyone from Old Trafford in there? Fire, all right, sick. Well, this is what I mean, this is what I mean, this is a place. And it, 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 my identity as a writer, so what, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, yeah, I said it three times, so that you, you think that I was stumbling, but really I'm just trying to get your attention to alleviate the point, and it, it's more, <laughs> caught you, I caught you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so, um, do I have a duty to talk about black issues because I'm black? Do I have a duty to talk about the place that I'm from? Because the place that I'm from, uh, places that are milestones in my like, childhood, so like the Seahawk Lounge, uh, it was like a bar near, near my house, and I, I learned to ride my bike outside of there, and it's just getting turned into like flats or a Tesco, and this is happening all around Old Trafford and all around Hume as well, and it, it, it started to feel like you know, intrusive on my childhood because now my memories, I don't have a place to reflect them in real life. I can't show my kids or if I have kids or whatever. Yeah. So I felt like my why should be changed to, you know, to, for the people rather than for myself. I'm spitting everywhere. Okay, next. Yeah, high school. So I hated high school. Obviously, I told you that already. Uh, what was the point of this slide? So this slide is like, uh, it's just me, t yeah, so in, in high school I would draw a lot and I would write a lot. And yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's, it's about the, the reason I wrote in high school was for escapism. So I hated uh, high school and so what I'd do on the side as a rebellion act would be write poetry and, and draw and cr be so creative in rebellion to the monotony of high school that I hated. But now... Oh yeah, then, then I went to college, and then the more free time I had, the less and less that I, I you know, uh, wrote for myself. And, and it, was a weird, it was a weird thing, because I felt like I have all the time in the world, this is perfect. Like, uh, you, um, you know Euripides from, the, he wrote Medea and stuff, he had a cave that he used to go to in uh, Macedonia, I think, and he would write in that cave. And I had this idea, this ideal idea of, the Euripides cave, which is my room that I just write in and I never have to come out and I can just slip poetry under the door and someone will slip back a, a 50 pound note or something and I'll live, I'll live off that, I'll live off that. But I've come to realize, no, I have to live life. I have to do something because if all I can do is write, I know that I'm drowned in the, the idea of why it, it's more hindering. Uh, oh yeah, so this is a clip. I don't even know if we can show, I don't even know if I have time. So I'm gonna skip over it, lad. No. Oh. All right, slam poetry. So, I don't know, I've had conversations with a poet, uh, John Berkovich, and he was talking about how slam poetry wasn't a thing. It's a genre that's been created and about how easy it is 
well, I, I think it's easy to be a poet now because there's no gatekeepers and there's no, and there shouldn't be, you know, you can't, you can't have a gatekeeper for art. Any, if I throw the pen on the floor, that's art if I say so and no one else can challenge me on that. But what worries me about slam poetry is that it feels like it's diluting the, uh, I don't know, diluting the economy of poetry sounds like a good thing to say also, I'll say that. Um, yeah, one sec, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I feel like it's easy, so people can just Google this, and they'll see the million, and I'm no shame to these people, you know, I've not even given them a chance, to be fair, but I mean, they'll see millions of views, and it seems like there's a formula to poetry that you can just follow, and it's a lack of originality, so they'll have buzzwords, and they'll have, you know, they'll talk about Donald Trump because it's relevant, and they'll talk about, uh, uh, the Syrian crisis, not out of a genuine feeling, but out of this will get me clicks in, a, in, a, in an open mic night and this will get me feeling like I did something and I, I really reject that because I don't feel like it's true and I think if you're not going to say it better or origin it, if you're not going to say it better than it's already been said or try at least try to, then why say it at all? And that's something that I think about on my own. So originality is something I mentioned. And um, the way that I visualize it in my head, in the terms of poetry, the northern poetry scene, is you have the titans, so you have the pioneers, which, and it's relevant to your generation. So for me, it would be, maybe that would be John Cooper Clark and that era. And then you have underneath that, oh, I, love, I love Greek mythology so much, so I love, I love that you talked about it. I just got, oh, man, I love it. <laughs> it gets me going, man. And then, yo, all of them titans there, like Prometheus, he gave fire to humans and Krona, and they all got punished for it as well. It's so symbolic. But, yeah, so John Cooper Clark would be that era to me anyway. And then the gods would be, like, my mentors that taught me. And then I wouldn't say I'm a demigod at all. I'm not saying that. I'd, I'd be somewhere much further below because I was taught by those that uh, were taught by the gods as well. <laughs> if I'm making sense, am I making sense? Yeah. Just tell me yes anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Have I got more? I do. So the Why? The why is important because the why drives me. The why is, is something that you, you, can't be, you can't be scared. In whatever you're doing in life, you can't be scared to ask yourself why you're doing it creatively. I feel like it's important to challenge yourself. And if you just ignore it, it's just going to keep growing and then it's going to be a bigger problem for you down the line. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Isaiah is a liar. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you want a poem then? Because I've got like 220 yeah. left. Oh, all right, you want to hear some really uplifting, end of the day, TED talky poems about life? Yeah? yeah. yeah let's hear it, let's hear it. Come on, guys. <laughs> Sick. I don't write any like happy poetry, it's all <laughs> sadness and gloom. You there. You don't look at it, you. I wrote you a poem last Tuesday and you weren't there to read it. It was a five minute poem in a box full of eyes with a body that God couldn't hide. Her diary was a logbook a wise man once wrote in. When she spoke, the fox shuddered twice. It sounded like a knife sliding through hot butter or a box cutter. She spoke like that. Wearing a coat dyed black hair in an old spice rack, I stood there with a bow tie, waxed, smoked. I laughed. She didn't emote like that. She was wine in a hot summer, and I was dining like job hunters do when lived on an island she stopped looking to bulletproof like, like coffee. No, bulletproof like newborns. Buried in plywood, two by fours. In hell, he holds the new high score. Forlorn as a fruit fly when the trees die. In the meantime, me singing, killing me softly, killing me softly, killing me softly, killing me softly. Put a pill in the coffee. Life would be easier with liquor and moxie licorice. I'm only sweethearted when the women are watching. I'm sat here in a box singing, killing me softly. That's a, a poem for me. Yeah. Wait, I've got 30 seconds here. Thanks, man. This is really good, man. Hey man, it's really good for my self-esteem, this man. <laughs> I've got 30 seconds to apologize for how scatterbrained and terrible it's been, so that the apology. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>